Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MathTube. In this video, we are going to learn how to calculate the inverse Z transformation using partial fraction method. So, I hope you already know what is a Z transform. Z transform will convert or transform sequences into functions. It might be difficult to analyze the sequence. So what we do is we transform it into a function which might be or which might make it easier for us to analyze. And once that analysis is done, we may need to go back to the original function. And at that point, we need to take the set transform. And to be honest, the programmers will make it into a software and the machines will do this. Anyway, let's learn the mathematics behind it. Okay, so you are given a function and you have to be very clear about one thing. Suppose you are given a sequence, it will be denoted by x of k or x of n. And if it is a time based function, you will have to convert it into a sequence by multiplying it by capital T. Because once you multiply it by capital T, this continuous input will become a discrete input. For example, uh, you'll get 1t, 2t, 3t, like that, like that, like that. You'll get discrete input and hence the discrete output. Anyway, the input will be x of k in my video, but in some books they use x of n. Both are correct. Now, once you take the set transform, our function will be transformed into a function of z, which will be denoted by capital F of z or capital X of z. And book to book, author to author, person to person, it might be different. But this is exactly what we are going to follow in our videos. Okay, so I think you got a rough idea. So we have to find the inverse third transform. And we will learn three methods. Method number one, partial fraction in this video. And in another video, we will learn a very powerful method that is the residue method. So this is another way in which they can ask. They will give you set transform is this, find x of z. So basically the same thing. Okay. So the first thing you have to give, do is you have to give the function a name if the function does not have a name. And when you are applying partial fraction, don't forget you have to multiply both sides by 1 by z. This is a critical step. Many, many, many students forget it. So once more, give the, uh, give the function a name capital X of Z or F of Z, whatever you like, and then multiply both sides by 1 by Z. So when I multiply by 1 by Z, I know that the right side will become Z plus 2 multiplied by Z plus 10. Once more, I am warning you, don't forget this step. Because in examination, you might be in a hurry and you will convert the original function into partial fraction. No. In partial fraction method, you have to multiply by 1 by C or 1 by Z. Now, the same old story. Uh, you are all experts in partial fraction or method of decomposition, whatever. We call it A by Z plus 2. And I'm going to skip this minor step. Uh, but do it yourself. Okay. Anyway, I got the value of X of Z by Z to be 1 by 8 divided by c plus 2 minus 1 by 8 divided by z plus 10. Now look at this. This is not the question. This is not the original function. So I am going to multiply throughout by z. So this is common 1 by 8. And I am multiplying by z, I am multiplying by z, I am multiplying by z. So I will get z by z plus 2 minus z by z plus 10. We can take the z inverse. So I am going to write z inverse of x of z is equal to 1 by 8 z inverse of z by z plus 2 minus z inverse of z by z plus 10. Now time to remember your z transform formula. Do you remember this formula? Um, the main reason we did like this is to retain Z in the numerator. Many, many formulae for inverse comes with Z in the numerator. Now one more line, 1 by 8 into minus 2 the whole power K minus so 10 
10 minus 10 the whole power k. I am just applying this formula. Can you see z divided by z minus minus 2. So, a is minus 2. That's it. Now, look at this. Another question. Okay. Are you ready with your pen and paper? Okay. Write the question. So, like you, I am also excited. So, I am going to find z inverse and I converted it into partial fraction. Oh, no. What is the mistake that I made here? Think about it. Pause the video and think once. Look, they asked me to find z inverse. I converted it into partial fraction because the method is partial fraction method. But it is 100% wrong. So look at this. Don't forget. Call the given function as. You can give any name that you like. I called it f of z. If you want, you can call it x of z. This was the mistake that I made. See, I accidentally made the given function into partial fraction. No. What will you do? You will multiply both sides by 1 by z. Okay. Now, the basic partial fraction method. I am going to call it a by z minus 2 plus b by z plus 3 plus c divided by z plus 3, the whole square. And I am multiplying throughout by um, z minus 2 into z plus 3, the whole square. Imagine I am multiplying here, I will get 1. I am multiplying it by the same stuff uh, everywhere and we get, okay. So I got 1 by 25, confirm it. Uh, minus 1 by 5 and I got minus 1 by 25. Anyway, I plugged it back. So, did you understand? I got f of z by z, not the function. Now, I had to multiply throughout by z. And that's it. Now, all you had to do is you had to take z inverse. Can you see? I am taking z inverse on both sides. What is the formula? What is z inverse of z by z minus 2? 2 to the power k. So, this will become 2 to the power k. This will become minus 3 to the power k. Oh no. What will you do here? So, we need another formula. Z inverse of a z divided by z minus a the whole square. Please note it down. This will be k multiplied by a power k. So, can you see? We got z divided by z plus 3. So, what I did in the next step is, I am multiplying numerator and denominator by minus 3. And minus and minus will be plus. So, I have to multiply numerator and denominator by minus 3. Did you get the point? So, I kept minus 3 here. I kept minus outside and minus and minus became plus. Now, all I have to do is apply the formula. Anyway, now I want all of you to take a screenshot. I will minimize the screen. Unless and until you know these formulae, you may struggle with inverse. Now, let's talk about the positive part. If you know these formulae and partial fraction method, residue method and convolution method, you will be able to solve almost all the problems in inverse Z transform and also the difference equations. Difference equation is the most important application of Z transform. Especially when you learn this in mathematics. So, once more, take a screenshot. I will quickly show all the formula that you need. Okay, now let's do one more problem. That problem is super important. It's completely different. Okay, now uh, you can try this yourself. Pause this. Try it. But again, I am warning you, don't get too excited. This is not the function that you have to convert into partial fraction. Divide both sides by z or multiply both sides by 1 by z. Okay, now this problem is super important. Okay, so we have z squared by z squared plus 1. And it is clearly mentioned use partial fraction. So I don't have any other option. Okay, by the way, subscribe to our channel and comment below and support us. Okay, so we have uh, z divided by z squared plus 1. So I want to factorize this. So, I am going to equate it to 0. I am sure you know what to do. So, z will be plus minus root under minus 1. So, z equal to 
plus i z equal to minus i. Now I know that the denominator can be factorized into z minus i z plus i. So look at this. So what I did is I'm calling the given function as z by z square plus 1. Now what should I do? I did multiply both sides by 1 by z. And then I'm going to factorize the denominator. We already I already showed you the factorization. And then we are going for partial fraction method a divided by z minus i plus b divided by z plus i. Then I am going to multiply throughout by z minus i into z plus i. And then you put z equal to i, z equal to minus i. Same method, partial fraction, we get very cute values. But at the end, I got something like this. Nothing to worry. Um, now multiply throughout by z. And can you please tell me what is the formula of z inverse of z by z minus a? Yeah, very nice. a to the power k. So I got the answer, but I should not leave it here. By the way, if you do not understand the remaining steps, that means you are not good in complex numbers. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to convert the complex numbers into polar form, the modulus argument form. So i means 1 plus 0 i. And you can see that the location is here. And this angle is 90 degree. So this can be written as, and the modulus is 1. So this can be written as 1 into e power i 90 degree. And that will be e power i into 90 degree. Similarly, minus i. Can you see minus i means minus 1 plus 0 i. So that minus i will be over here. And the length is 1. Modulus is 1. But angle is minus pi by 2. Remember, this is 0, 90, 180, and, but this should be minus 90. Anyway, what I did is I am going to convert it. So, I have i to the power k. Can you see? Here I got i to the power k. So, I will show you what to do. i can be written as e power i pi by 2, the whole power k. And that will be e to the power i k pi by 2. I am applying loss of indices. That will be cos k pi by 2 plus i sin k pi by 2. Similarly, minus i to the power k can be written as e to the power minus i pi by 2, the whole power k, that will be e to the power minus i k pi by 2, and that is equal to cos k pi by 2 minus i sin k pi by 2. And you saw in the above question, we have to add them up. And when you add them up, you end up like 2 cos k pi by 2, and that is the last answer. So did you get the point? And this 2 and the 2 outside will get cancelled. This is extra important. Make sure you try it once. Now, a small job for you. I hope you understood. So immediately I want you to practice this question and this one. And again, this is super important. In case you get the answer in terms of i, no, that is not the final answer. You have to convert it into modulus argument form and convert it or simplify it as much as possible. So, I will be back with another video in which we will discuss convolution method and inverse method or the residue method. So, till then my friends, bye.